Welcome to VanOfAction.com, the Van Build Series coming to you from the interior of British Columbia. And today we're talking about how to cut two pieces of wood the same size every time. Let's get started. Every week I get comments on my videos and, uh, and good, bad, criticized, I don't care, I love them all, please don't stop. I, I read them all, I reply to all of them, and oftentimes people say to me, Dave, I've never really done very much carpentry work, and the answer to that is... The answer to that is you don't have to have done very much carpentry work. Certainly having a foundation of knowledge makes the job easier, but you could do an, an exceptional, spectacular job on your van build with very rudimentary skills. The first thing you have to learn how to do is how to cut two pieces of wood square and the same size. Once you master that skill, you're pretty much all the way there to what you need to know. And there's two tools you can use to do that very easily. I'm going to show them to you. The first is the table saw. And if you're going to do a van build, having access to or having your own table saw is definitely a really good idea. This is not my saw. This is a saw that came with the shop that I rented here in British Columbia. My saw is much fancier than this. It's in Ontario. I'm really blessed to have this here. I didn't have to move mine with me. But this is not a really good saw. This is a, a, a saw you'll pick up at Home Depot probably for less than three or four hundred dollars. But the reality of it is all saws do the same thing. The fancy ones just make it look better and make it easier. But this saw has everything I need to be able to make wonderful machine cuts. And you've seen them if you've watched any of the videos. And all you have to do is make sure it's set up properly. So we're going to talk about that. A table saw comes with two fences. A rip fence, which is used for cutting pieces in length, ripping it in length, and a cutoff fence for cutting pieces off to length. And these, this, the cutoff fence slides on the two rails on each side of the blade, depending on whether you're doing it right-handed or left-handed. You set it in the track, you take a piece of stock, hold it against the fence, and then push it through the blade. That's the mechanics of it, but you've got to make sure you're set up properly first. And the first thing we want to do is make sure that our saw is, uh, our blade is perpendicular to the fence so that we're getting a square cut in the straight up and down direction. Now, all, ta all table saws are known as tilting arbor saws, and that means the motor will tilt. The blade will tilt so you can cut up to 45 degrees as you push a piece of wood through it. And on this particular saw, the control is at the front. Sometimes you'll find them at the side. I'll guarantee you're going to have one. The better the saw, the more intricate this is. Mine's just a little nut, there's a little lever here, and then you see how it, how it just, the weight of the motor itself caused it to release a little bit, tilt. So all we have to do is loosen that off and then set it until it's square. And we do that with a small square gauge. You'll find that there's a dial that will tell you, it'll tell you when it's supposed to be 90, but they're not always accurate, so always check it. There. With that first setup, we've now got it so that when we run our, our piece of wood past the saw blade, this way it's going to be 90 degrees. That's perfect. But now we want to make sure it's 90 degrees as we go past the blade as well. And we do that with the cutoff fence. This piece right here. There's a couple of issues here though. Check this out. This fence is only six inches wide, which is a problem, which is gonna be a problem for us. When we put a piece of wood on here, we don't get a lot of purchase. It's gonna be awfully hard to know that we're holding the piece of wood still as we pass it through the saw blade. So we wanna make this fence longer. The first thing we do is we get a piece of straight wood that's an inch and a half to two inches wide. And then we're gonna fix that piece of wood to the fence. You need to take a look at your fence. They're not all the same. This particular one has two big holes. Sometimes you'll find they'll be countersunk to receive a screw. You want it, whatever you put on here, however you fasten the piece of wood to it, you want it to be fastened really securely. So what I'm going to do is drill some holes and put some bolts through the fence and into this piece of wood. 
Now I have the piece of wood fastened to the fence. And in my particular case, I used some quarter inch nuts, went through with some lock washers and bolts in the back. You have to look at your fence. It may mean a trip to a hardware store just to get a couple of pieces that you need to, uh, to make this work. But it's really important that whatever you do does not stick out beyond the face of the wood. Okay, that's important. And it's really important that this dimension is not greater than the height your saw blade will cut. That's really important. And it's really important that this dimension from, what am I gonna do it from here? Here to here is longer than the distance from the rail of your saw to the saw blade. You need it to be longer than the blade right now. Now, that fence is gonna work, but we have to get it set so that it's cutting square to the blade. So you do that with a framing square. This really couldn't be easier. If the fence is set to cut at greater than 90 degrees, check this out, watch what happens. Watch the heel here. If you're, if you're greater than 90 degrees, as you advance towards the saw blade, you get closer. You see that? It's moving closer to the blade. If you're set at less than 90 degrees, you move, oh, it's too much, let's see here. Watch it now. You'll move away from the blade. As you advance towards the blade, the square moves away from it. The gap gets bigger. So all we have to do is adjust it so that our saw, our square stays parallel to the blade as we push it towards the blade. Once we've got that set, we know we're cutting square. Can't be wrong. Can't be wrong. Once you've got it set like this, all you have to do is get some ear protection and push this past the saw blade. We're all set to start doing some work. We've got the blade set so that it's cutting perpendicular to the table. And we have the fence set so it's cutting perpendicular to the blade. So we're going to be able to cut a piece of wood in 90, uh, that's going to be square in two directions very easily. So what we're going to do just to demonstrate that is take these three very odd sized pieces of wood, make them all exactly six inches long, square on both ends in just a matter of seconds. No, not, no problem at all. The first thing we're going to do is get our ear protection and our eye protection and we'll square off the ends of each piece. Now that was just a real quick pass over each end just to square off these ends. And now you've got to be careful. So now what you do is as you cut those pieces, I will take them and turn them 90 degrees so that my, my good end is away from the blade. That way I'll know that this, this is the end I want to run through the blade. So now I want them to be six inches long. I know because of the way we built our fence that the end of my fence is exactly where the blade cuts. So I don't have to cut, I don't have to measure these pieces individually. I can just come down my fence and make a mark at six inches and put a stop there. Now, what's a stop? The whole idea of going through the effort of making jigs is to make life simple. And so with the cutoff fence, the way it's set up, we can make a very simple stop and life will become so easy. We measure once, we'll make all kinds of cuts. The way we're gonna do that is by building a stop out of a piece of wood that's just a little bit wider than the fence is. Number one. The second step is we set the blade of the saw so that it's just a little bit high, a little bit, a little bit lower than the fence is. And then we bring our rip fence over so that this little block we have is just about lined up with the edge of it. Perfect. Now with a little ear protection,
we have a stop. It'll slide right along the top of it. And that stop is just a little bit. Sorry, I'm nailing at you because I got my ear. That stop is just got a little bit shy of the table so that any sawdust you don't you don't want you want to have a little bit of space under here so that as you're cutting your pieces any little bits of wood that gets that stuck in there will fall and will slide underneath you don't want that stop to go right to the tabletop and now to cut pieces to cut these pieces that we cut previously we square the ends off I'm going to put that right there these pieces I want them six inches long. I come down my fence six inches. And then I take my stop, slide it to where that mark is, put a clamp on it. And now I can be absolutely confident that from this distance, from this part of my fence, my stop to the blade will be six inches. So now with these pieces, with my the piece I've already, the end I've already cut, I just have to put it over against the fence, make sure my blade's high enough because this is a thick piece of wood. Slide to the stop, ear protection. Now we have three pieces exactly the same length. That's great. Now that's that works really well if the pieces that you're cutting are approximately the right length to begin with. Like if you're doing, if you're machining doors, cabinet doors, or, or you might, you what you would do is cut everything to about the rough length, a couple inches long, do all your other machining for, for rabbits and styles and ends and dados and things. And then you would, you would trim them to the proper length with this method. This is the perfect way to trim them. But if you had a long piece of wood and you wanted to create 15 or 20 pieces of wood six inches long out of one big long piece, this doesn't work very well at all because this part of it is sticks out way too far to be functional. So for that one, we have to do it a little bit differently. When we do it that way, we have to set up a jig on our fence. And let's say again, we want it to be six inches long. We take the stop that we had. I'm going to use the same. I'm going to use the same stop. Because I know it's about the right size. The stop that you had. And we measure because now we're measuring from the blade. We can't measure from the fence itself because our fence doesn't necessarily end in the right place. So we put the stop we're going to use and come over until it's all set at six inches or whatever length you want. There's six inches right there. And I've got this anchored down. I know the distance between this stop and the blade is the six inches that I'm looking for. But I don't want this stop to be and the blade to be uh, opposite each other because then the piece that I cut off will get stuck in there and I don't want that to happen. So once I've got the dimension, the size I want, I bring my stop down so that it is well behind the blade. And I anchor that stop here to the fence. And then I can take my my cross cut cut off fence and use it because I know it's gonna push straight against the blade. And I can take my piece and first trim the end square to be sure as a first step and then just advance it to my stop each time and push it through. 
eye protection, ear protection. So, in a matter of seconds, we've cut three pieces of wood exactly the same length, square in two directions, absolutely simple. Easily done, very simple to do. Now, that's great if you've got, even at this though, even with this method, there's going to be a limit to how long a piece you can work with. As I have this piece hanging out over the far end, there's going to be a limit to how steady this whole system could be. If the piece gets too long or too unwieldy, then that's when we have to go and use our second method, which is the skill saw. Now, this is just two of, this, of a ton of different jigs you can make to cut things off at 90 degrees square in both directions. There is a, a boatload of them. These are the two of the simplest ones I know of. And with these two, you could do anything you need to do in a van build. Absolutely anything. Hope you found this useful. If you did, please give us a like, a share, and a subscribe. And watch this video next to us. This is the roof rack where you can use this, this particular tool to make all the cuts. And the other videos you'll find useful as well. Y'all come back now.